Hello guys, Winston here. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm ditching the CNC and making something by hand. I know, this is a really strange concept. But way back in the day, when I was a full-time student with a little too much time to kill, I decided on a whim to make a book safe. I documented the build mostly on a pair of webcams because at the time I had very little camera equipment at my disposal and even less knowledge about making videos. Very bizarrely though, my video somehow ended up being one of the top results for BookSafe making on YouTube and is currently sitting at just under a quarter million views. One recurring comment I keep getting with that video though is, hey, could you actually explain what you're doing instead of just speeding through the whole process? Between the really low-res footage I had saved and a persistent phobia of speaking in front of a microphone, much less a camera, that never happened. But very recently, a friend of mine commissioned me to make a book safe as a going-away gift for their coworker. An economics book would be the perfect Trojan horse for some small items as they were leaving for grad school. This of course gave me a perfect opportunity to address some of the long-standing deficiencies in my original book safe making video. This is Book Safe 101. The ideal book for making a book safe has two characteristics. Number one, it's hardcover. Pretty understandable because floppy books will give away the fact that there's a rigid central compartment. And number two, they have thick pages. Phone books and whatnot make obnoxious project books because they take longer to cut and their high page surface area to volume ratio means that moisture from glue or your sweaty palms is more likely to cause the pages to swell and deform. Once you have a suitable book in hand, figure out where you want your safe to start. I like to leave a couple loose pages to enhance the illusion that this is a functioning book when you first open the cover. You're going to need a sheet of plastic or other slippery material to separate these first few pages from the main section of your safe. I'm using some polyethylene in the form of a plastic bag. Do the same for the back cover. Now you can glue together the main section of your book. On my original book safe, I used a solution of watered down Elmer's glue. On this new one, I'm going to be using Mod Podge. It acts in basically the same way, but it's at the perfect consistency for me to form a ceiling layer at a reasonable thickness. It really doesn't matter what you use, though. I applied Mod Podge to the outside of the pages with a foam brush, making sure to get complete coverage from top to bottom. A little excess doesn't hurt, but you don't want the glue to run. Now here's the important part I didn't do sufficiently well the first time. You need to apply pressure to keep these pages flat as they dry. I put about 15 pounds of weight on my first book safe while it dried and the pages still ended up buckling under constrained expansion. That's partly due to the flimsiness of the pages, but mostly because of insufficient compression. This time I sandwiched my book between two slabs of MDF and applied liberal amounts of pressure with a couple clamps. The results were a lot better. I applied a second coat of glue to lock down any stray pages or cracks that I missed the first time around. When this is done, you'll also want to glue your block of pages to the back cover. Here I just use straight Elmer's glue. Now it's time to plan out what size you want your cavity to be. I went with a 4 by 6 inch space since that would leave me with a comfortable 1.5 inch margin on all sides. Trace the outline of your cavity lightly in pencil, then use a straight edge to guide your first few cuts. Don't use a wooden ruler, go with plastic or metal. Unless you have the hands of a surgeon, your blade is almost certainly going to try and take chunks out of whatever it is you're cutting against. Use a good X-Acto knife or utility knife with a fresh blade to start. And unless you're cutting very deep, I would try and avoid those retractable box cutters. Their blades are a little too flimsy and it's hard to apply a lot of pressure with them. I personally aim to pierce about 5-7 to seven pages at a time. Score along each side of your cavity. As you approach the terminating edge, you may find that the angle of your blade prevents you from completing the cut. Just flip the knife and go the other way. This way you can get the tip of the blade all the way into your corners. Also, rotate the book if you have to so that you're not cutting at an awkward angle. If you're not 100% comfortable with the orientation of your arm, you're probably not making the cleanest cuts possible. Every dozen pages or so, I like to take some time to clean up the edges and remove slivers of pages I left from previous misaligned cuts. Any errors in your walls will only get worse the deeper you go, so correct them while you can. Now I know, by this point, some of you will go or have already gone, but Winston, seriously? You're doing all of this by hand? Clamp that thing between some MDF, drill a hole through it, and use a jigsaw. And yes, that is a perfectly valid solution, but the finish isn't quite the same. There's an imperfect crispness to hand-cut pages that you can't replicate with power tools. Not that it's necessarily more aesthetically pleasing, but handmade items have an organic look which can be charming in their own way. And since this was a gift I was commissioned to make on short notice, I didn't have the luxury of experimenting with new techniques, so I just went with the tried-and-true hand-cut method. Anyhow, once you reach your desired depth, you'll want to seal the cut edges. This can be done the same way the outside of the book was sealed, by brushing on a light coat of glue.
You can also optionally seal the bottom of the BookSafe cavity to make it more durable. You'll want a way to make sure the bottom page doesn't swell too much though. If you can, drop in something to apply even pressure to the front face of the page while it dries. And that's pretty much it for making a basic book safe. You can optionally line the inside of your book with fabric or flock, but that's beyond the scope of today's project. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and if you're curious about why my uploads have been so infrequent lately, check out my other video. I spent 10 days on vacation in Utah last month, and you'll be able to see just why I was so keen on making a third-person GoPro attachment for my backpack.